Joining me tonight, Olivia Nuzzi. Olivia, I am so thrilled to have you here. You obviously cover uh, Washington for New York Magazine. Politico called you one of the breakout stars of 2016. And I love that you started writing as a kid in New Jersey. So welcome, welcome to the big show. Thank you. And Gene, the great, the legendary Gene Robinson. Gene, when you show up, Somehow everything is okay. Everything is okay. <laughs> okay. It we need, is. We need Everything's that okay. <laughs> Obviously, MSNBC political analyst. Remain calm. Four decades. Four decades. Yeah. yeah. At the Washington Post, Pulitzer Prize winner, and legend. Oh, yeah. It's not Mike Barnacle. It's you that's the legend. <laughs> and Sam Number, I'm so happy to have you here. We Thank love you. getting people from the other side. Former, of course, campaign Trump campaign advisor. You were hired, fired. Hired again and then sued by Trump, so congratulations right. on all that. And fired also. And fired three. also. Oh, there were three times. <laughs> yes. uh, you were called, obviously, in front of Mueller. And is it still true that Roger Stone was your hero? Have we changed on that? Are we, have you moved on from that? He, well, he was. He was. He, he was. was. Okay. Right. All right. Lots to get to tonight. First up, let's go to the wall. Infrastructure meltdown. Will the president's, I don't want to play and I'm taking my ball home, hissy fit be a 2020 strategic windfall for Democrats? It sure should be. I wish that his family or his administration or his staff would have an intervention. She's not the same person. Uh, she's lost it. Brian Chuck, crazy Nancy. I pray for the president. I'm an extremely stable genius. The opposite of Gene. <laughs> He's an unstable he non-genius and you're a stable genius. That okay. stuff actually happened. Is that amazing? It, it actually happened in the United States of America. The President of the United States and the Speaker of the House. I'm a stable. Yeah, what, what a gift to the Democrats. Two oh. gifts. Number one, anytime Trump and Pelosi go at it, yeah. that is a fight. Trump cannot win. Exactly. He's 0 for 1. He owned the <laughs> shutdown. And now he's on for two. He now owns Gridlock. He owns Washington. Gridlock, right. He took ownership of Gridlock, saying, I will not work with the House of Representatives uh, as long as they investigate me. Well, guess what? They have that right. They have that duty. That's what, that's what the House does. Uh, and so he has taken ownership of Gridlock. It was amazing. He, something about Pelosi yeah. drives him crazy. Yeah. Uh, Literally uh, crazy. Yeah, I, I, I've suggested that she has the right note as a woman in power going after Trump. She's this iron fist in a velvet glove. She goes after his manhood. She goes after his competency. And she does it with elegance and grace. I have a little bit of a different view on this. I don't think that he's genuinely irritated or upset by her. Really? I think that he thinks that it's terrific theater because they are so, the juxtaposition of the two of them is so extreme. Um, and I think he knows that it's drama that people are interested in. Uh, I think he knows that she has her fans and her supporters. He has his. Um, and that it's exciting when the two of them are at odds. And I think that he's I... trying to do that. I mean, look, the Rose Garden, that was set up for an event before he allegedly mm -hmm. you know, walked out of there. I agree with just about all of his other fights. Mm -hmm. I think this fight, he continually loses. She just seems to one up him. There's a calm and he doesn't, he doesn't have the same punch. He doesn't give her a nickname. I feel he is threatened by her intelligence. And I, I feel there is a difference when Nancy fights. And uh, mm -hmm. you obviously know Trump, Sam. So uh, do first, you? so do I. Right. First of all, do you see a more unhinged guy than you saw two, three, four years ago? More unhinged. Uh, no, when I see is somebody who really doesn't get the joke anymore, who's, who personalizes everything to the point where when you hear him this week, he's unable to say that uh, he wants to do better for the country. He wants to work on infrastructure, despite what the, what the Democrats are doing to him. He is flat out said, if you investigate me, I am not going to pass anything for this country. And it's really something I've never heard a president say. Bill Clinton did it so brilliantly. Yeah. during his impeachment and that's one of the reasons why I think he ultimately won and why this impeachment which I think is an which I think is an outcome that's going to happen is going to destroy him and well, it, 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 I want to show a clip and go back to the debate of is Pelosi a winner or losing for him I feel he's so threatened and this is repulsive Fox actually played the social media distortion of her that made her they actually played it as real tape Trump right. retweeted it Giuliani retweeted it let's take a look at this vile vi uh, video we want to give this president the opportunity to do something historic for our country. We want to give this president the opportunity to do something historic for our country. 
Talk about what fascists do. Gee, yeah, I mean, I in, in your lifetime of covering candidates. I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen anything like this. This is, uh, and this is only the beginning. We're just getting into the campaign. You know, the thing about Pelosi, um, I, I don't know how well you guys know her, but she is, people think of her as a San Francisco liberal, and da, da, da. she is Tommy D'Alessandro's daughter. Yeah. You know, she's the daughter of the Baltimore long-time, mayor, yeah. you know, ward-healing mayor of Baltimore. That's how she learned politics. That's how she plays it. In a, in a setting like this, around a table, um, she tells the funniest stories. She's sharp as a tack. She is, uh, you know, and then when the cameras get on her, you know, she develops this sort of rictus, and, it, and it, it, you know, she's not a natural television vision performer but she is a natural politician who learned Brilliant. from masters she, and she really knows what she's doing she's, she's very politically on. polarizing on the right but they're making her a sympathetic character and i think that the president got lucky with somebody like hillary clinton during the election no. and he can't an play one. this game can't play it. with pelosi all right let's go back to the wall don't reach to impeach speaking of nancy pelosi i believe her strategy of stepping away from impeachment for now is not only the smart play it's the only play. Olivia, I have said all along, if it's a poker analogy, keep stacking your chips. There's no reason to go all in now. Keep the chorus of investigation after investigation, particularly as the judges are starting to side with you. Don't give him the club of saying I'm a victim. Don't go against popularity where it's only 37 percent. I'm not quite sure the Cortezes of the world and some of the youngins in the Congress or any of the others, why they feel the need or think it's in any way strategically sound to go for the I word right now. Well, I think that Pelosi's in a difficult spot because of how split her party is on this. But I also think that there are certain things that impeachment would allow the Democrats to do. They would be able to, uh, you know, Donald Trump is saying this is kind of a fishing expedition, right? Um, they're trying to get these documents and they don't have justification for that. If they were formally uh, in impeachment proceedings, I think they would have something to point to. And also it would be a way of organizing um, everything. Right now it's all very spread out, right? There are a lot of different investigations, a lot of different uh, entities requesting documents. If it was all consolidated, I think that maybe uh, would help Democrats fight back against some of the uh, allegations that they're just completely unfocused, not getting anything done because they're focused on uh, trying to find some wrongdoing there. But I, I do agree, I think right now, we'll it seems like uh, it probably would help Donald Trump if they were to uh, to I actually can turn the theory that all of this stuff is too much to actually a benefit it's a chorus instead of a lead singer and it plays in the backdrop it doesn't look like they're overreaching it's out there on a daily basis and particularly when some of the early rulings are going in your favor well, that's, the th that's the thing I mean I you know I've been on the fence about this I could I could see both sides of the impeachment question um, but uh, you you know, as I wrote this past week, after after what we saw in the week, I think Pelosi has earned herself, uh, you know, a whole bunch of time to pursue uh, the strategy of stopping short of impeachment. First, the court rulings are going decidedly in in the Democrats' favor uh, against the administration. And, and basically the judges are saying, you know, get this stuff out of here. This is ridiculous what you're arguing to, to the administration. Um, so, and, and then um, that the dust up with, with Trump um, over infrastructure and then beyond, uh, with her coming out the winner, I think it strengthens her hand with her caucus. Um, uh, you know, I'm not surprised, there were predictions that she couldn't possibly be the speaker. There was going to be this, this, you know, humongous challenge, and the youngins were going to depose her, and the youngins all fell in line. Yeah. Um, don't underestimate her. Oh, I never do. Sam, mm -hmm. Trump is a master at simplicity right. branding. When you give him impeachment, you give him that one club. They're trying to get me. They're trying to impeach me. They're trying to impeach me. He does not have the backhand response when it is a multiplicity of different things happening. And the more you can, I don't want to say confuse him, but not let him overly dumb down and simplify the issue, the more you win. And he can't get into the details about explaining executive yeah. privilege and about saying, well, I gave executive privilege within, uh, within my authority, within my branch. I don't want to necessarily give it to Congress. And the American people look at this where obstruction is a process crime, but now they see that these hearings are being obstructed. And I think that's where you're going to continue to see it's gone from, let's say, 34 to now 40, 42 on whether or not there should be formal impeachment hearings. All right. But 
Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.